My name is Tim Westmuller. I'm the Director of Campus Ministry here. I have the privilege of starting off the year introducing you to our new liturgical theme. This year's theme is Fearless, and it's from an amazing song by Jasmine Murray. Before we sing the song together for the first time as a group with Exodus, let me ask you a question. How many of you are a little distracted right now because you have something that you're worried about or afraid of? I am. Okay. <clears throat> of course you are. It's the first day of school, which represents so many anxieties. Some of these anxieties could be really subtle that you don't talk about, but some could be really big. I asked our senior life corps members this summer what are some of their biggest fears heading into their senior year, and this is what they sh uh, shared with me. I, feel, I fear failure. I fear not being able to carry out my responsibilities, and I fear others of disappointment in me for some reason if I'm not perfect. I fear that God's plan for me will be completely different from the future that I envision for myself. I fear falling short of expectations. Both my parents were both collegiate athletes and very successful, so I have large shoes to fill. They expect a lot out of me and they fear not reaching their expectations. Me not reaching their expectations haunts me daily. I have a constant fear of mine is that I won't be as talented or as skilled as my friends or classmates, especially if they achieve big accomplishments uh, that make them stand out more than me. I fear that people are always annoyed by me and that they pretend not to, to spare my feelings. I also fear that I'm not pretty enough compared to a lot of girls. I fear being forgotten. It's always a constant fear of mine that can sometimes consume my thoughts and it's hard to get rid of them. My biggest fear in life is that I'll grow up being an adult and look back at my adolescence and have regrets. My fear is being alone because I'm a person who constantly has to be around someone and feel loved. I fear the entire college application process. <laughs> It's so long and stressful and it can seem like there's so much to do in such a short period of time. And the last one, I think I often fear the health and safety of those I love. Those are some pretty powerful and uh, honest fears, aren't they? When we're completely honest with ourselves and we start naming our fears, there's a part of us that just wants to run home, close our bedroom door, and stay there all day. It can take a huge amount of effort every day just to overcome our daily fears. And we also have the small fears, right? The ones that can seem overwhelming, you don't even want to talk about. Many of you may not be focused on those huge fears. You may be worried about things like, where's my first period class? Right, freshmen? I remember so vividly, and seniors, I should say. I remember my freshman year in high school, there were thousands of things that I was afraid of, like whether or not the clothes that I was wearing, whether or not they were cool, they weren't, <laughs> and whether or not I could live in the shadows as a sister who was a star athlete, or whether or not my middle school friends still wanted to be my friend when I got to high school, or who was I gonna sit next to in lunch. But for some reason, the first day of weight training class and then football practice freaked me out the most. Going into my freshman year, I was about five foot nothing, 100 pounds and nothing, and I was terrified of being in a weightlifting class with a bunch of upperclassmen, and I was terrified of being on the field with them. To reinforce my insecurities, the teacher decided to mix the lifting groups, and I was with Trip Lawrence, the star varsity linebacker. Trip was about 6'4", 230, and was built like a Greek god. <laughs> I was afraid to even spot him on the bench press because there was no way that I could help him lift if he couldn't get it up. <laughs> and as much as, the, and as the practice got closer, I got sick to my stomach thinking about being hit by those guys who were bigger, stronger, faster than me. I had that realization that many of you have when you come to MIDI. I am now a small fish in a big pond. 
I don't know how I did it, but somehow I got through those initial fears. Looking back, I think instead of con concentrating on the huge fears of not being Trip Lawrence, I decided to focus on the little things that I could control. And I decided to focus on not the fear of the game, but the love that I had for football. I, show, I started showing courage by pushing myself hard to do one more rep when I didn't think I could and learn, more, one, learn one more play before I went to bed. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, months turned into years, and before I knew it, I was the athlete that I never thought I could compare myself to. No, I was not Trip Lawrence, but I was the best Tim Westmiller that I could be. And I discovered my truest self in the love of football, not in the fear of football. Now that's a football example, but a lesson that I can easily apply now to other parts of my life like teaching or being a parent. Sometimes when I'm overwhelmed with fear, I take a deep breath and I try to recognize the feeling that I'm feeling. I believe every human thought, word and deed can be boiled down to two emotions, love and fear. Fear is an inner energy that contracts, closes down, draws in, hides, hoards and harms. When you live in fear, you are pulling back from life. Love is an inner energy that expands, opens up, sends out, reveals, shares, and heals. When you, love, uh, you live through love, you open, you're open to all that life has to offer with passion and acceptance. But love is risky. Love is unsafe. Love isn't for the faint of heart. It takes courage. Love means giving life the opportunity to break your heart, but knowing that there's far better things ahead than what you've left behind. And what a great scripture passage that we listen to today to start us off the year. Because we come to find out that fearless is one of the most important things that God desires for us. Jeremiah was a prophet in the Old Testament. And Old Testament prophets weren't fortune tellers. They didn't use crystal balls to tell the future and tell people what they wanted to hear. Prophets in the Jewish scripture were those who accepted the challenge to be a mouthpiece, a spokesperson for God, to speak the truth against sin and injustice. They were asked to see what was going on in society and proclaim truth to people of how God desires us to live, much like Martin Luther King and Cesar Chavez of our time. The prophet Jeremiah lived in a time of enormous turmoil. The nation he loved, Israel, was filled with injustice and sin. The people had lost their way in following God. To his utter surprise, the young Jeremiah, God spoke to him and asked him to be a voice, to show people the way. The consequence for Israel not listening to Jeremiah was the destruction of their nation by invading outside empires. That is a lot of pressure. Jeremiah responded the same way that most of us would. He said, who, me? Are you talking to me, God? Little me, I'm not wise enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not courageous enough to speak out to a whole nation. Please don't put this kind of pressure on me, God. Go ask the Trip Lawrence over there. Everybody likes him. But God doesn't make mistakes. God does not call us to do the things that we're incapable of doing. God said to Jeremiah, I know you better than you even know yourself. I know you can do this. I know it seems overwhelming to you, but please trust me that you will grow and become someone that you don't even recognize right now. I have created for you for this, and I will not leave you alone. I will put words of wisdom into your mouth when you need it. I will speak, you will speak the truth so that everyone knows it comes from me. Be not afraid. By the way, the phrase, be not afraid, or variation of, is used almost 300 times in scripture. I think God is calling us to be fearless, right? So how do we become fearless? It's so easy and cliche to do during a speech, but it's much harder to do when we face the temptations of taking shortcuts or to run the other way. So I just want to give you four really quick things before I leave you. Fear, feel fear, but choose love. The irony of us asking you to be fearless is that you can actually never go without being fearful. You just have to acknowledge it and move and work through it. Fear is a reaction, but love is a decision. 
Make the decision to live your life out of love and not fear. Do what you love and attack it head on. That is the greatest cure for fear. The second one is practice courage every day, but start with the small things. Starting with little things allows us to be courageous in the big things. Courage is like my weightlifting class. You can't be courageous enough to solve the world's problems if you haven't built up your courageous muscles to be courageous in the small things. Write down a list of fears and start tackling the small ones, and then the bigger ones will become easier for you. Because courage is a virtue muscle that we have to build, there will be things that you momentarily cannot lift. I could not bench press my freshman year what Trip Lawrence could, but I could by my senior year. I don't call, we don't call it quits because we failed once. It means that we get up off the ground, we go back to practicing courage, and we try harder the next time. Stand up for what is right. Let's not confuse courage. Courage is not something to be confused with with being a daredevil or type of obtaining a selfish pleasure. It is not courageous to jump off a cliff 50 feet and plunge into the water. Courage is intrinsically tied to doing what's right in a situation. There are so many ways to show courage for what's right that spans the gamut from deciding not to cheat on a test to sitting next to a classmate who's alone to choosing to say something when someone makes a racist, sexist, or homophobic joke. Do what's right in the face of fear. Sorry. And lastly, know that you're not alone on this journey. I've always tell students on my immersion trips, become comfortable with the uncomfortable. You cannot grow in courage or wisdom by hiding in your bedroom. You have to push yourself to be placed in environments that challenge you and allow you to see the world in a new way. That is the beauty of your education here at MIDI. We will challenge you and push you every day, but you will still be in an environment where you know that you are supported and you feel safe. Take advantage of this place as a training ground for courage. Allow yourself to be uncomfortable knowing that we are here for you when you fall, and you will fall. Our liturgical theme is about, our liturgical theme song is about a person realizing that there's so much in her life she fears, fears that feel like mountains and, and, and monsters. She has faith, however, to know that she needs God to help give her strength and courage she needs to overcome her fears. She wants God to make her fearless. This year, we ask God's strength to help us, to allow us to be fearless in the face of our fears. That strength will come through prayers, it'll come through practice, and it'll come through learning by, from each other. Let those around you know that you need help in overcoming your fears and building courageous muscles. I promise you that if you do this as a, a community, we will grow so much this year.